This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. Time now is 427. A thank you for joining us on this Friday morning, Carb Day. I'm Meredith Barrett. And I'm Nicole Griffin. Today is finally the day starting race weekend off. Today is Carb Day at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Yeah, and there is a lot going on. The final practice for drivers starts at 11 o'clock. Then at noon is our one hour trackside six special. We hope you tune in for that. Then there's the Indy Lights Freedom Race at one, followed by Cool and the Gang at 3.30 and the headliner of the Carb Day concert, Foreigner. So a lot to look forward to, and we'll have everything you need to know as we head into race weekend here on Good Morning Indiana. Taking a turn now, some sad news out of Delphi this morning as a search continues for a little boy. Yeah, this first happened, this happened last night when a group of kids was near this this Riley Park there in Delphi, and they say they, re, they saw that four-year-old boy go into the water there. Yeah, so... Authorities searched for him last night. Uh, they still continue to search for him this morning. We will keep you updated on this, obviously. Uh, not good news and uh, creeks and other waterways. Because of all the rain we've had, Alyssa, are a the little faster and yes, there's a lot much, more water. Yeah, most yeah. of them are much higher right now, so they are very dangerous. People should be staying out of mm -hmm. them. And we are going to continue seeing that rain as we head into the weekend. We do have just a few lingering showers and storms across the area this morning. Most of that is just to the south. You can see right around Bloomington and Seymour. Not nearly what we saw yesterday morning, but we will continue to see the potential of a few spot storms as we head through the morning and then that will clear out as we head into the afternoon. That's just from that lingering front behind it. We have high pressure building and we'll see some clear skies as we head into the afternoon and evening hours today. Temperatures are continuing to climb. It's going to stay warm outside and a little bit humid into the 80s. Now I know a lot of people are wondering about race weekend mm -hmm. and we are keeping an eye on that but it does look like we are going to continue seeing that potential of showers and storms on Sunday. All but right. You won't really know until that day comes. We're gonna keep an eye on it, but it, it's looking pretty good right now. Okay, right now. all right, Alyssa, thank you. And finally, we here at RTV6 are celebrating 70 years, and today we sit down with the man, the myth, the legend, <laughs> Derek Thomas. He is still here at RTV6. 40 years, just incredible, and he has done and seen it all. So we're gonna take a look back at everything he has experienced over those four decades as we celebrate 70 years. We've got that coming up, plus news, weather and traffic, here to start your Friday and your carb day on Good Morning Indiana. This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. Badge number? You don't need that. What's your problem? You don't have, you have literally you're no doing 90 problem miles an hour. You're and you're not. Only on RTV6 video of a Jay County Sheriff's deputy driving dangerously fast. This morning, we're learning about the actions being taken against the deputy. Plus, the Indigo Red Line is set to start running later this year, but will it be ready for passengers? What city leaders say is being done to fix the problems with those new buses. And welcome to Carb Day. Before you pack up and head out to the track, we're breaking down the important message IMS leaders want you to hear. Thanks for joining us on this Friday. Friday morning, I'm Nicole Griffin. And I'm Meredith Barrick, Elena Martella, keeping an eye on the roadways this morning. And Alyssa Donovan with a good look at the skies. Everyone wants to know what the race weekend oh, forecast is. I know, is. I know. And you know what? I know Todd's been keeping an eye on it all week. Our whole team has, but it is looking like we have the potential of those showers and storms oh. in the forecast. And we really can't even nail down the timing quite yet oh. on that, just because it looks like we could see the potential for those showers and storms really throughout race day. Now, I have to say, Saturday. Saturday is looking better though. It looks like we just have a small chance of some showers okay. and storms in the evening for people going to those concerts. Mm. It's looking a little bit better. Good. So that's the good news. Today, <laughs> we are going to start out very warm and humid this morning. Temperatures in the 60s across the area, 65 degrees in Indianapolis, 62 in Greencastle. So a warm and humid start. We are going to see those temperatures continue climbing today into the 80s. And we do have just a few stray spot showers and storms happening just to the 
south of us. That's just from a lingering front that's just moving off to the north right now. So we are seeing a few spot showers just to the south of Bloomington and Seymour this morning. We'll continue to see the potential of those showers and storms until about midday. That's when we'll see things die off. But you can see a lot of the convection is just off to our west right around Peoria right now. They are seeing some of those stronger storms. As we head through the morning, we'll continue to see that potential, really seeing that track through the region by mid-morning. Temperatures are going to climb into the 70s. Not expecting severe weather at this time with that system moving through, but you could see just a spot storm or two with some heavier downpours at times mid-morning. Temperatures are climbing into the 80s this afternoon. We'll start to see things clear out and we'll see some patch patches of sunshine as we head through the day. Temperatures are starting today in the 60s and we're going to climb into the 80s again, but it is going to be hot and humid outside. I know a lot of you are wondering about race weekend. I'll have those details coming up in the full forecast. All right, thank you, Alyssa. Not much happening on the roadways right now. Coming in from this northwest side, heading southbound on I-65 from I-865 down to I-70. It should take you 20 minutes, a little bit of a slowdown around Lafayette Road for some overnight road work, but nothing major right now. Let's take a look at the roads. Here's a look at I-65 with the north split. Everything's moving along just fine. Let's take a turn over to the south split. There was some overnight road work underway in that left lane of the southbound side, but you can see all's moving along just just fine right now for your morning drive. Elena, thank you. Race weekend is finally here over the weekend. More than 300,000 people will make their way to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Yeah, things kick off in just a few hours when the gates open for carb day. If you are headed out to the track, IMS officials want you to remember a few things. They say an enjoyable weekend is near the top of their list, but their first priority is keeping you safe. That is why officials say you should plan ahead and arrive early, especially with the threat of inclement weather. I do ask people, and it seems kind of odd when we say this, to kind of know your own personal safety plan. And the reason we do that, we're a facility that's a mile long and a half a mile wide, and you might park a mile away from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and it takes you longer to get to your car than the person that's parked in the infield. So we can't uh, always say, hey, do exactly this, because we don't know where you are. So that's why we're always saying throughout the morning, know your safety plan. IMS is helping you prepare on the plan ahead section of its website. There you can find detailed information about parking, gate regulations, accessibility, and much more. And as we mentioned, today is Carb Day. Here's a look at the events on tap. Indy 500 drivers will have their final practices at 11 o'clock this morning. At noon, we will have a special one-hour Trackside 6 broadcast here on RTV6. That's followed by the Indy Lights Freedom 100 race at 1. Then at 3.30, the Carb Day concert begins with Cool and the Gang. They are followed by headliner Foreigner. That, of course, is all leading up to race day on Sunday. We have everything covered for you starting before the gates open with breakfast at the Brickyard at 5 a.m. Our six hours of live coverage is followed by our special, The Crucible of Speed, at 11. Then join us after the race for post-race coverage on a special edition of the news at 6. Developing this morning, the search will continue for a four-year-old boy swept away by, in, by Deer Creek in Delphi. Police say a group of kids playing in Riley Park called 911 around 6 last night after seeing the boy disappear in Deer Creek. He was last seen wearing a blue sleeveless shirt and blue shorts. Investigators say currents are strong right now and everyone should be cautious playing in or near the water. Only on RTV6 video of a Jay County Sheriff's deputy driving dangerously fast and pulling over the man who says he wanted to hold law enforcement accountable. That deputy, Derek Bogenschutz, is facing consequences for what he he was doing caught on camera in Frankfort, Indiana, nearly 90 miles away from Jay County. You can see the sheriff's vehicle race past the driver with the dash cam, later changing lanes without signaling. Anthony Cunningham, who captured the video, tells RTV6 he thought the deputy shouldn't be above the law and needed to be held accountable. We're doing 50 and a 30, 60 and a 40. You know, at one point in time, we get up to 90 and a 55. Like, that's just insane. Chief Deputy Patrick Wells with the Jay County Sheriff's Office says Deputy Bogenschutz was in the area for training. The chief says the deputy was reprimanded and given five days unpaid leave and a 30-day suspension of his take-home car privileges. Chief Wells says the behavior depicted in the videos is not the type of behavior tolerated by the Jay County Sheriff's Office. 
This morning, there were questions about whether or not the red line will be ready for passengers when the buses hit the street this summer. It comes after another problem related to the project. Brand new electric buses will be used on the rapid transit line, which runs a little more than 13 miles. Back in March, Call 6 investigates learned the new buses were not staying charged long enough. Now, Indigo officials say the bus manufacturer will pay to install wireless charging stations along the routes. Red line construction is scheduled to wrap up by August at the latest. We're passing along a warning if you visited Mark Pie's China Gate and Sushi restaurant in Columbus. Health officials say an employee working at the restaurant has been diagnosed with a case of hepatitis A. The infected employee was working at the 25th Street location from May 15th until May 20th. If you ate at that location in that time frame, health officials say you should get a vaccine. Hep A is a viral infection of the liver. It's usually spread through unknown knowingly ingesting items from an infected person. Doctors say you need to you need to pay close attention to children for hepatitis A exposure as summer vacation begins. Depending on their age, kids might not show the same symptoms like adults. It's something you need to especially keep in mind as children join camps and play with other kids this summer. Symptoms for hepatitis A can sometimes be confused as regular regular flu-like symptoms. If you're not sure, go see a doctor. Dr. Jeffrey Collins says the best prevention is a vaccine even if you are not sure if your kids have received it before. He says if they do get hep A, it will take time, rest, and fluids to recu recuperate. Basically, your body will develop immunoglobulins or antibodies to the uh, to the virus, and so you'll no longer be at risk of uh, catching hepatitis A again. Dr. Collins says one thing to remember about the virus is that it lives on surfaces at room temperature for months, so using germicidal wipes is recommended. The war of words between President Trump and Nancy Pelosi are heating up. Straight ahead this morning, the new directive just issued by the president to the intelligence community. Plus, flood waters continue to rise in Oklahoma this morning, why officials are asking people to be extra vigilant. Alyssa. And we have a few showers and a couple pop-up thunderstorms happening across the area to the south of us right now. Coming up, I'll tell you how long these are going to last, and I'll have your race week weekend forecast as well. When you buy or lease a new 2019 Atlas. Welcome back to Good Morning Indiana. Time now is 441. Here's a look at I-65 at the pedestrian overpass. Everything's moving along just fine right now for your drive. Stay tuned. I'll have your latest traffic update coming up in just a few minutes. Elena, thank you. SpaceX makes an out-of-this-world move as part of its Constellation mission called Starlink. The company sent a rocket with 60 satellites skyward Thursday. It's a large leap toward its goal, an expensive broadband across Earth. If most of the satellites successfully deploy and make contact with ground stations, this would be the biggest step any company has made in this field. Getting everything in order is expected to cost roughly $10 billion. The president and House Speaker hurling personal insults at one another and questioning each other's mental fitness. As ABC's Mona Kosar Abdi reports, this all comes after President Trump stormed out of an infrastructure meeting with Democratic leaders. Over the last 24 hours, the nation's top leaders caught in a game of he said, she said that has now turned personal. It all started Wednesday when the president stormed out of an infrastructure meeting with Democratic leaders after he heard House Speaker Nancy Pelosi accuse him of engaging in a cover-up ahead of the event. The president again stormed out. I think, what, first pound the table, walk out the door. Another ten temper tantrum. She said I walked into the room right next door yesterday and walked in and started screaming and yelling. Just the opposite. Just the opposite. She's a mess. Pelosi called the move a stunt to distract from the Mueller report. But I think what really got to him was that these court cases. President Trump says he will not work with Democrats until they stop investigating him. He also accused the speaker of, quote, losing it, claiming she doesn't understand the issues. I'm an extremely stable genius. Okay. Meanwhile, breaking overnight, word the president has sent a memo ordering the intelligence community to, quote, quickly and fully cooperate with his attorney general's review of the origins of the Russia probe. Overnight, Trump tweeted, quote, intelligence agencies were used against an American president. House Judiciary 
Beery Chairman Jerry Nadler responding, calling it nonsense on MSNBC's Rachel Maddow show. And what they're really trying to do is to divert attention from the Mueller report and from the uh, uh, from the president's actions against the rule of law uh, to an imagine to an imaginary scandal. President Trump has long accused the Obama era FBI of treason and claims they spied on his 2016 campaign. Last month, Attorney General William Barr testified before Congress that he believes spying did occur, sparking backlash from Democrats who accused Barr of acting as the president's personal attorney. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, Washington. $44 million, that's how much a tentative deal to settle sexual misconduct lawsuits brought against the film company co-founded by Harvey Weinstein is said to be worth. About $30 million would go to Weinstein's alleged victims and creditors of the former studio. The rest would be used to pay the legal fees. The proposed agreement doesn't affect the criminal case against Weinstein in New York City. The disgraced movie mogul is largely seen as ground zero for the Me Too movement. Days of rain are causing problems across Oklahoma and it doesn't look like Mother Nature is backing off anytime soon. Keystone Lake near Tulsa is already 30 feet above normal. The Army Corps of Engineers decided to open the floodgates to release more water. The dam is currently spilling nearly 2 million gallons of water per second. Residents downstream are concerned about flooding. Officials say they are keeping an eye on things. You should take some precautions to save your life. If, if the water's coming up, you need to be ready to go at a moment's notice. Now's the time to be ready to walk out that door, get in your car and leave. The dam hasn't released this much water since 1986. Here at home, we could have some showers today, Alyssa, but they are going to be short. That's right. Most of the activity is going to happen in the morning, and then we will see things clear out by the afternoon. We're looking for a dry evening ahead and warm and humid conditions to kick off our weekend. Now, we do still have that possibility of storms on Sunday. We also have the possibility of a few moving through on Saturday afternoon and evening. So that's really our lookout for the weekend forecast. Temperatures right now starting warm this morning and humid, 65 five degrees in Indianapolis. Those winds are currently calm and we are seeing just a few spot showers to the south of us right around Bedford and just to the south of Seymour right along I-65. That's all coming from a system that's moving to the north of us. We are seeing just a little bit of convection right around Peoria and into the Illinois area just to the west of Indianapolis. We could see a few pop-up spot storms yet this morning. Looks like that will really clear out as we head into the afternoon hours, but we do have the potential of just a few storms moving through as we head into mid morning and then things will really clear out as we head into the afternoon. We're also going to see the potential of a little bit of sunshine today. So that's the good news. Temperatures are climbing into the mid 80s. So it's going to be a warm day as well. Things are going to stay dry overnight and then for most of your Saturday before we see the potential of a system moving through. That's going to bring us the potential of some showers and storms as we head into Saturday afternoon and evening. Temperatures are going to stay very warm on Saturday into the upper 80s. We are going to see mostly sunny skies before we see the potential of those showers and storms move through. And then on Sunday, we are going to see the potential of those showers and storms scattered really throughout the day right now. 80 degrees, so temperatures are going to drop off a little bit. So if you are heading to the race, you are going to want to bring some rain gear along with you. And here's a look at the timing on that. On Saturday, starting out pretty nice in the morning and then by the afternoon and evening, that's really when we start to see that potential of showers moving through the area and then Sunday morning that's when we'll start to see that showers and storms move through from that second wave and that's really going to stick with us throughout the day. We can't nail down the timing on that quite yet but we do have the potential of showers and storms during race time. So just be aware of that as you're making your Sunday plans you are going to want to have some rain gear along with you as you head to the race. Today, temperatures are starting in the 60s this morning. Spot storms possible this morning. And then we'll see things clear out as we head into the afternoon. Temperatures will be into the mid 80s today. So another warm and muggy day. Temperatures are staying warm tomorrow. We have that potential of afternoon showers and storms. And then we do have the potential of some showers and storms for the Indy 500 on race day. So definitely plan ahead with that. Memorial Day, we could still see some lingering showers in there, but a much lesser chance temperatures are back into 
into the low 80s. All right, thank you, Alyssa. Here's a look at I-465 and Michigan Road up on the north side. You can see right now all is moving along just fine. Some flashing lights right now. Right now there was some overnight road work, but I believe it has cleared up for your drive. So we should be good to go, but I'll keep an eye just in case. Let's take a look at the map. So something you're going to want to pay attention to this weekend, especially on race day, there's going to be a lot of closures downtown. So some closures beginning around 11 o'clock is going to be Georgetown Road closed south of 25th Street, as well as 16th Street between Olin Avenue and that 16th Street roundabout, which is on that western side of uh, IMS. So you're going to want to pay attention to that. Leave earlier than you typically would when making your way to the track. And of course, I'll have a, uh, more details on my uh, social media accounts about where you can go, how to park, those types of things. Let's take another look at those roads. I-65 at South Split. You can see all is moving along just fine for your drive. There was some overnight road work, but it's cleared up and those roads are dry. Elena, thank you. It's a somber tradition in the form of hundreds of thousands of flags to honor America's fallen heroes. Memorial Day means so much to us because these are our brothers and sisters. This is our legacy. These are the people that came before us and we are so proud to be a part of that. The annual flags in ceremony just outside Washington, D.C. marks the beginning of Memorial Day weekend. American flags are now on more than 228,000 grave signs at both Arlington National Cemetery and the Airmen's Home National Cemetery. The flags were placed by the 3rd U.S. Infantry Regiment. The tradition started more than 60 years ago in 1948. Coming up here, former IndyCar driver Robert Wickens continues to recover from a horrifying wreck just nine months ago. Still ahead, the new video showing the incredible progress he's making. Plus, a woman never moved into an Indianapolis apartment complex, nor did she sign a lease. Ahead at 5 o'clock, why complex officials still wouldn't give her the security deposit back until RTV6 got involved. I'm Vinny Politan. Coming up today on the all-new Court TV, our coverage of the Kellen Winslow II trial. Winslow is a former all-pro football player accused of being a serial sex offender. We'll talk about a new surprise witness prosecutors want to call in the case. The defense is fuming, and now there's a big legal battle brewing in the middle of the trial. We'll have all the testimony and all the arguments all day right here on Court TV. And you can stream the all-new Court TV wherever you are on CourtTV.com. We will be right back. Ashley Home Store. This is home. Crashing a wedding can go one of two ways. You have a great time and leave with a great story, or you leave in handcuffs. For one Florida man, it was the latter. The man in this photo here arrested for a misdemeanor count of disorderly conduct. Newlyweds Adam and Sadie Doika say they have no idea how the stranger got into their wedding reception at a hotel in St. Pete Beach. But after walking into their reception, police say he disrupted the bride and groom's first dance when confronted by security, then he escaped, but eventually he was arrested. The couple says no hard feelings for them, but they do have a message for him. If we could like give him a high five for giving us an unforgettable wedding, we would. <laughs> That's a good attitude to have. Well, the couple says they are not mad. In fact, they found it funny and would like to now meet him. An Alabama police officer injured in a deadly shooting reunited with his canine partner. Officer Webb Sistrunk was greeted by his canine partner, Leon, with a great big kiss. Sistrunk was shot in the shoulder and airlifted to a hospital in critical condition. The officers were responding to a domestic violence call when the gunman opened fire on four officers and Leon. The canine was not in injured in the incident. A great reunion there. Another big milestone for IndyCar driver Robert Wickens in his long road to recovery. Nearly nine months after a crash on the track nearly killed him, Wickens is taking even bigger steps and becoming more mobile. Yesterday, he boarded a plane by himself. Wickens says two months ago, he boarded this very same plane for the season opener in St. Pete. The difference then, his fiance Carly Woods helped him move his legs and other people were supporting his body. Body. I saw this tweet from him yesterday. Big milestone for him. So happy to see him getting better. Wow. And to think where he could be in nine months from now, that will be incredible to see. So way to go. We love seeing those updates. Okay. All right, let's get an update now on our weather. Yes, yeah, so today we are going to see the potential of some spot showers and storms this morning. Things will clear out by the afternoon. We'll see some sunshine, 85 degrees for the high. And then tomorrow we're going to start with mostly sunny skies. And then we have the potential of some showers and storms late in the afternoon 
afternoon and evening for your Saturday. For the Indy 500 on Sunday, we do have the potential of scattered storms. Look like Looks like really throughout the day right now, temperatures will be in the low 80s. Memorial Day, a few showers possible as well with highs in the low 80s again.